afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. On behalf of the Ellsworth Memorial Association, together with the Daughters of the American Revolution, Abigail Walcott Chapter, Abigail Walcott Ellsworth Chapter, so sorry, I welcome you all to the historic Oliver Ellsworth Homestead today. Before I begin, I'd like to share with you our great honor in having with us this afternoon our esteemed Connecticut Daughters of the American Revolution State Regent, Alice Ridgway, and she is here. If there are other honorary state regents that I have not yet recognized, please let me know and know that you are very warmly welcomed and recognized also. Our energetic CTDA, our vice regent, Christy Henry, is here today. And we warmly greet her and all CTDA, our state officers, who are here. We are so glad to have join us our State Conservation Committee Chair, Valerie Chase. Is she here yet? I'm hoping. She may be delayed. And many other generous women who have given thousands of hours of service through DAR across the state, oftentimes in their capacity as chapter regents. Beth Witham, one such daughter, is regent of our local chapter, the Abigail Walcott Ellsworth chapter. Here in Windsor, I was delighted to find enthusiastic support and encouragement from town organizations and groups here in Windsor. Our municipal forester, Jim Gavoni, one of Windsor's treasures, we have Scott Storms with us today, our Connecticut State represent, Representative. And also people outside of the DAR share our desire to protect and conserve this special place. But a partnership emerged that seemed special right from its beginning between the DAR and the Nature Conservancy. After more than a year in the planning, we can celebrate the completion of the process to restore the number of elms on this property to 13. You will see around you some of the trees are marked with red, white, and blue ribbons. Some are the new saplings that came from the Nature Conservancy. And some were planted earlier in an, a wave of elm restoration some years ago. And for any of you who have not heard the story about the elms, just very briefly, Oliver Ellsworth so loved his home and his country that he planted 13 American elms to symbolize the 13 American colonies. And he named his property Elmwood. We celebrate today that the historical story has been given new life while at the same time the environment has gained new life too. We celebrate our good fortune to have found the Nature Conservancy and the wealth of talent in our midst. And you will hear from our distinguished guest, Dr. Christian Marks of the Nature Conservancy, and you will know that it is a good thing that we have done and deserving of our recognition. I'm delighted that RCTDAR State Regent Alice Ridgway has agreed to say a few words today. Madam State Regent. This is too tall for me. When you're five foot two, you don't stand behind big podiums. Um, I'm really just here to let you all know that um, this is a perfect example of what we mean by today's DAR. For those of you that don't know, the Daughters of the American Revolution has a mission to promote, obviously, historic preservation, patriotism, and education. But we not only have those as our guiding mission, we have countless committees. And one of our committees is a conservation committee. So I've been saying for about a year now to our members, everyone who joins the DAR is a leader. <laughs> Just by joining and saying, yes, I want to trace my lineage back to those Revolutionary War patriots, male and female, who sacrificed for our amazing country, that makes you a leader. And this event 
warms my heart so much because it's a perfect example of that leadership. I literally had a two minute conversation with Jane. Honestly, it was like, what would you think about doing this thing? And I went, great, go for it, awesome. And I'm, I'm a, uh, I really believe you delegate and you let it go and people do amazing things. And this is an example of an amazing thing. Jane, with the support of her chapter now, has done this outstanding thing for the homestead, for Windsor, for the environment, and for all of you who are here enjoying it. So thank you so much for being here. I want to take a moment and introduce our two state representatives from local towns, Scott and Jackie, because they, Tammy, so poor Tammy didn't even get a, you'll hear her last name and you'll know why. Anyway, um, <laughs> Scott and Tammy have a citation. <laughs> Thank you. Um, I get called a lot of things. Um, I'm Jamie Zawistowski. I'm from the 61st district, uh, which includes a portion of Windsor, not quite this place, but um, a portion of Windsor, uh, as well as East Granby and Suffield. Planting these elms today is in, in honor of Oliver Ellsworth. It's, it's just a, such a fitting tribute to a man who, who loved this home, loved this area, and loved this country. Uh, for any of us who love history and, and love the state of Connecticut, this is really a big deal. And uh, Scott and I talked about maybe getting a citation, so we went ahead and did that. Um, the citation is from the General Assembly, and I'm going to hand this over to Scott. Thank you. I do have the pleasure of uh, presenting a citation from the State of Connecticut General Assembly. Uh, this citation was introduced by myself from the 60th District, Representative Zawistowski from the 61st, Senator Kissel from the 7th Senatorial District, and Representative Barham from the 15th District. Be it known, hereby known to all that the Connecticut General Assembly hereby offers its sincerest congratulations to the Ellsworth Memorial Association and the Connecticut Daughters of the American Revolution in recognition of the restoration of the American elm trees on the Oliver Elmsworth, Ellsworth homestead property. When Oliver Ellsworth built the homestead, he planted 13 elm trees, one for each colony. The planting of the trees today is a symbolic gesture to that event. In concert with the Nature Conserv Conservancy, ugh, the planting of our new disease-resistant elm trees will contribute to the ongoing elm tree restoration of river floodplain areas throughout the Northeast. Congratulations. The entire membership extends its very best wishes on this memorable occasion and expresses the hope for continued success. Given this 21st day of May 2017, signed by our President Pro Tem, the Senate, Speaker of the House, and Secretary of State. <laughs> So, to whom do we make this big presentation? Thank you. Thank you for having us. Thank you very, very, very much. We will. We will frame this and put it up in some place, either the homestead or in Matthews Hall, where everyone can have an opportunity to look at it and realize this. So, now I would like to introduce Beth Witham. Jane already mentioned her, but I will tell you again, she's a, a longtime leader for CTDAR. Beth? Thank you, Alice. Um, as uh, Alice and Jane alluded to before, this started out as a dream. A fantasy. Wouldn't it be great if there were 13 elm trees at Elmwood again? Um, and they're correct. Oliver loved this property. He said, Connecticut is the pleasantest state in the Union. Windsor is the ple pleasantest town in the state. And I have the pleasantest spot in the town of Windsor. Uh, he really loved this place. Um, I'm here to present an award to Dr. Christian Marks. Dr. Marks received his doctorate in biology from McGill University in 2005. Ever since, he has been passionate about the Connecticut River watershed and floodplain re restoration. More recently, he and the Nature Conservancy started developing Dutch elm disease tolerant American elms with the idea of restoring their presence in the Northeast. It is our great fortune that we found him, Jane found him, by researching the internet. And he came and visited, uh, walked down to the, in the floodplain area, saw that there was an ancient, an old growth elm tree. 
and said, oh, I, could I come back and harvest some pollen for that to assist in our program? And we said, of course. And Jane told him about our desire to have 13 elms, and he offered to donate enough elm trees to bring the total back up to 13. So it is my honor to present to Dr. Christian Marks the Conservation Medal of the Dodge of the American Revolution, dedication to the preservation of the natural resources of our country, its soils, minerals, waters, forests, and wildlife. Is your certificate, and I have this great medal. This is the highest award the DAR gives for conservation. So, here you go. Oops. I'm not gonna pin, you, pin it on you, because that's awkward. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, thank you very much. Oh, I'm good. Thank you. Um, well, it, this really is the pleasantest place. Um, I, it's so enjoyable to be here. Um, and uh, part of what makes this place such a special place is that the Connecticut River over eons has deposited all these rich alluvial soils um, which is the preferred habitat of the American elm. So um, Oliver Ellsworth chose well in planting that tree species here um, and my, it is my hope that as these trees mature and start producing seed that their disease resistant offspring will spread into the floodplain forest and along the Connecticut River and help restore the species um, throughout the, the area more generally. Um, so it was really a, a great uh, symbiosis between restoring the historic place as well as, as restoring the species for conservation purposes. Um, so I, it's been a really lovely working with Jane and she, she really took the initiative and, and made things easy for me. So thank you, Jane. Thank you. I hope you won't mind me saying, but it was more pleasure for me to work with Dr. Marks. What a font of knowledge. It has been such a learning experience, even to seeing how he plants a tree. I learned watching him plant a tree. Dr. Marks has with him Kim Lutz. Kim Lutz is the director of the Connecticut River Program for the Nature Conservancy. She was very kind to lend us so much of Dr. Marx's time. And we would like for her to spend a few moments sharing some of the information that she has a probably a much larger picture than we are able to see. But this is starting to come together for us all. Thank you so much, Christian. We so much appreciate you and the Nature Conservancy. Kim, would you be so kind? It's so great to be with you all today at this beautiful, beautiful location. It's my first trip here, so it's a, a special treat <clears throat> to see these trees planted. And as I was thinking about what I would share with you today, I came across a proverb about tree planting. And it says, what is the best time to plant a tree 20 years ago? And I thought, well, <laughs> Oliver Ellsworth had that foresight hundreds of years ago. But what's the second best time to plant a tree? now. <laughs> so we have done that uh, with these beautiful elms and uh, those who come after us hundreds of years from now will reflect on that we had the wisdom to plant those trees now. So thank you all for being here. So the organization I represent is called the Nature Conservancy. And I don't know how many of you are familiar with us, but I'll tell you just a little bit about our organization and then a little bit more about what we do in the Connecticut River watershed. So the Nature Conservancy is a conservation group that works to make people and nature thrive. We do that through our over 3,000 staff located in 68 countries around the world. But bringing that close to home, we do that in a couple of different ways. 
We do it through our scientists. Christian is a great example of that. We have 600 scientists working across the world to think about things like how do you restore a, a tree that's really been lost from the wild, like the amazing American elm. We also look at how do we collaborate with communities. This is a great example of that collaboration, but there's even more. Throughout the state of Connecticut, we have scientists and practitioners working with your coastal communities, thinking about how do we protect those coastal communities from storms like Hurricane Sandy and Hurricane Irene that caused so much damage along the coast, and how do we use nature, things like protecting marshes, uh, <clears throat> restoring creeks and streams to absorb some of those floodwaters when the next storm hits. So how do we use our green infrastructure to help protect communities? And we've been doing that all across Long Island Sound and up and down the Connecticut River. So scientists, partnerships, collaboration, and we look we work locally to globally, and a great example of that is in our own Connecticut River project. We've been thinking for some time about how water moves in the, in the river, the high flows in the springs, the low flows in the summer, and how all the dams on the river affect that flow. The knowledge that we've gained right here in the Connecticut River, we've now taken all the way to India, where one of our staff is working with our Nature Conservancy staff on the Ganges River to think about how they can use that resource and the lessons we've learned right here in Connecticut can be taken to India to learn about the Ganges River. <laughs> so let me tell you a little bit more about what we're doing here in the Connecticut River watershed. And uh, I think the word I think about is reconnection in so many ways. Any guesses uh, how many dams are on the Connecticut River and its many, many tributaries? Anyone want to go for over 100? Yeah. Okay. What about over 500? Yeah. What about over 1,000? What about over 2,000? So when this part of the country was built, we needed a lot of small dams to power that mill down the street, to power all the industrial revolution that happened right here in the Connecticut River watershed. And to do that, many, many, many dams were built, approximately 3,000 in the watershed. So that's on the Connecticut River itself and all the rivers that feed the Connecticut, like the Farmington. So there's about a dam every 10 miles in this watershed. So what are we doing with those dams? We're trying to reconnect parts of the river so that fish can move upstream, so that those dams don't cause damage when we have big storm events. So those dams that no longer serve an important human purpose, we're working to take those out. Dams like uh, the Norton Mill Pond Dam, where we're working with the city to develop a beautiful historic park in honor of the history of that site. Uh, as well as to allow the river to flow, to be reconnected again. <clears throat> Another element of reconnection is Christian's work. We're reconnecting the floodplain to the river. Floodplains are, is just a, a, a word to say that part of the river, that part of the river that is the forest. So the river and the forest meet in the floodplain, and that's the part of the river system that uh, overflows its banks, typically in the spring, and that uh, water brings with it soil and nutrients that feed the trees that form these beautiful floodplain forests like what's in back of us today. So that's another thing we're doing is trying to restore floodplain forests from the headwaters way up in uh, New Hampshire all the way to the coast. So that's another type of reconnection. And the third reconnection that I'll end with is reconnecting people to nature. That's a big part of our work. We're anxious to make the Connecticut River a place where people can recreate, that can get out and canoe, can take a hike, and can reconnect with nature for whatever benefits that you all get from nature, whether that's a peaceful afternoon, an opportunity to plant a tree, an opportunity to hear a bird song. We're interested in all those reconnections, and that's the basis of our work in the Connecticut River watershed. So again, I just really thank you for being here today, uh, and thank you for giving us a place to give these elms a home, and I look forward to coming back and watching these trees grow and prosper over the years under your care. So thank you so much. Thank you so much, Kim. That was enlightening. I won't keep you much longer. As we close, I'd like to ask a couple of favors of you. We do have a little sign-in sheet. We'd love to know that you were here. 
um, and if you have any particular interests or questions, as many of the ideas that flow from this activity come to maturation, we expect that more and more people will be involved and is excited about what kinds of things can grow from this. We're thinking ahead. We're thinking about a pollinator garden. We're thinking about Friends of Elmwood, a group that's forming not just DAR, but people from our community who are all vested in the value of this beautiful, beautiful property. If I have failed to recognize anybody, and I know uh, I, I've been told we have a Councilman Jepson here. I'm very sorry I did not recognize you in the back. I know we have Mr. Morvash here, very expert plant and tree person, and probably some other people. And Valerie, right? Is Valerie here? She's back here. Hi, Valerie. I'm so <laughs> glad that you are here. Thank you for coming. We have some refreshments that you will be welcome to help yourself to. We hope everybody has a little memento pin from the Ellsworth Homestead. We'd like you to take an opportunity when I'm done to take some photographs with some of these wonderfully photogenic people. <laughs> did I miss anything? I probably did. But, oh, yes. Last and not least. If anyone is interested and has not seen the interior of this homestead, we will be offering tours. Just line up at the far side of that house and Beth Witham will take people around for a tour. Do you want to wait just a few minutes so they can have a cookie first? <laughs> you can have a cookie first. You, you've all been very patient in listening for so long and I thank you so much for coming today and I hope that you will enjoy yourselves. Thanks again.